Is it on? Yep. Recording? Recording. Sweet. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, marriage covenant is based on so, uh, uh, differences, not similarity. So, when you go into a covenant, you want to look for, um, yes, how they can benefit you, but how you can benefit them. What strengths do I have uh, that can benefit their weaknesses? What strengths do they, do they have that can benefit my weaknesses? Um, it's about differences. Okay, I'm into farming. Uh, they're into, you know, building. Well, together, I'll benefit them because I'll be able to farm some land for them, but then they'll benefit me because um, they'll be able to build for me. So what happened in, in covenant relationships or, or partnerships, um, it increases everyone. And that's what covenant relationship is all about. And also, covenant was made so that it cannot be broken. Uh, and we're going to find out why. Blood was shed during a covenant ceremony for the purpose of highlighting the seriousness of it, to cause a lifelong remembrance of it, to scar your mind so you won't be forgetting the promises and the curses made to help keep it. So blood was shed. Um, praise God they used animals. <laughs> uh, but they'd cut an animal in half and let it you know, uh, uh, fall apart like that. I mean, that's going to be a lot of blood and guts and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, you're talking like an ox, like a big cow. Um, but they'd, they'd you know, slaughter a few. Uh, can be, uh, you know, just uh, medium uh, to large animals. And then people that are... Uh, or the, the, the two key players in this covenant uh, would walk through that and they're declaring uh, the, the benefits of this covenant, uh, the promises and the curses. And then they'd cut their own wrists and then they'd join each other's blood to show that they're no longer two parties, they're now one party. So they're one family and that's where a husband and a wife, they normally join names. Uh, so, you know, it would have been Paul Hockley, you know, Ryan Paul Hockley, Jacqueline Paul Hockley. Um, but in, kind of in today's society and in, in some countries, they'll take on the husband's name. Um, but it's to show the oneness of it. But a lot of blood was shed because when you see a lot of blood, you normally smell and everything, you're like, well, and you'll never forget the day. Yeah. Um, imagine if you're going through a marriage ceremony and you're having to cut your wrist and join wrists together and you're letting that scar. You've got a scar to prove you're married, not just a ring that you can take off. It used to be that they'd cut a ring around your thumb and you can't take that off. Oh my gosh, you know, I want to flirt around with this lady. I can't get my ring on, you know. You can't do it. Um, because to do that means you're going to break your covenant. Um, and to break your covenant means you've got to die. Um, that was part of the curses. And, uh, and we can read plenty about that in Deuteronomy 28, where it talks about the, the promises that are uh, for us if we keep and uphold the law of God, and then the curses that will happen to us if we don't. Yeah. And normally they're the opposite. You know, you'll have rain if you're, if you're, you're bait, you'll have no rain. So you can't grow your crops and stuff. You know, you'll, you'll have uh, famine, uh, you'll have drought if you don't, but you'll have everything provided for and you'll prosper if you do. Uh, just something like that. And, um, but so in a, in a marriage covenant, that's kind of what you're coming in with. You're coming in with, what can I do to benefit, to, you know, uh, to, to better this marriage? <clears throat> and so on. But blood was shed so that we'd remember. Our minds are scarred. Um, there's, there's literal scars. Uh, so we won't be forgetting the promises and the, and the curses made to keep it. And, you know, you don't want to become a covenant breaker. That's just, you know, I mean, the Bible says in the last days that there will be a bunch of covenant breakers, but we're seeing that all the time. Yeah. No one, well, I can't say no one. There's a few. But most people uh, don't keep their words. They say one thing, oh, you know, that happened, oh, well, you know, I couldn't do that, Mara. You know, and so they're, you know, ripping people off and so on. Yeah, I mean, we all, you know, we all hear stories and stuff about that. Covenant was made so that it could not be broken because if you did break it, you died. Yeah. That was back in the day. I mean, if we instigated and put that back into motion, I'm telling you, there won't be too many break and covenant breakers. You know, you break covenant, you're a dead man or you're a dead woman. Covenant demands absolute, unending, and unwavering loyalty. Covenant is total giving. <clears throat> I know in our carnal minds we start to think, what about me? What do I get out of this? So carnal and so the opposite of God. If God was like that, He wouldn't have died for you. He wouldn't have died for me. He died in the hope that we would turn to Him. He died hoping, not expecting. He hoped it was by faith that He did it. 
But he, he lived this out, what I'm telling you, what covenant is. He is the epitome of covenant. If you, are a co uh, if you are in a covenant marriage relationship, your spouse is bound to do the same for you. But even if your spouse doesn't, you are bound to keep acting like Jesus Christ in this relationship and love them not according to how they treat you, but how you want to be treated. I mean, that's love 101 in the Bible. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Yeah. It doesn't say do unto others as they're doing to you, unless, you know, they're starting to throw daggers at you, they hurt you, they've been at you, Mara. No, no, no. It says do unto them as you'd have them do unto you. Love being walked out is tough, but the rewards are wonderfully exceptional. If we want to live out this love walk. Now, depending on how far your spouse has run from keeping their covenant, will determine the actions that need to take place, which call for you hunting them down and slaughtering them, you know, for breaking their covenant. No, I'm sorry, that was, that was traditionally speaking. Um, I mean, separating from them, which is always to help with reconciliation, not escape. Sometimes it calls for, okay, for instance, in this country, um, uh, a big deal has been domestic violence. Uh, where husbands, even wives, are bashing their husbands and stuff. But it may, you, you separate for a, a while. It's like, come on, we've got to sort this thing out. But it's not to separate to like, I want out, I want out. No, it's for reconciliation. You separate because you want to reconcile. Um, that's what this is about. Now that's covenant. Let's have a look at vows. When it comes to making vows, they were always in line with what you had to offer. That's what you're making a vow for. It's what you're vowing that you will do or be for uh, the other person. They were always in line with what you had to offer. You make promises based on what you can give to the rest of this relationship and how you want this relationship to benefit the other person for their good. Yeah. Um, in doing marriage counseling, uh, or pre-marriage counseling, sorry, um, I found that uh, a lot of people didn't really know what to put in their vows. Um, you know, and so they're kind of making these vows and, you know, um, and look, they were precious, you know, they're declaring their love, like myself, for instance. Um, uh, but they, they, they weren't really knowing what, what am I meant to be vowing? Like, what am I saying? And it's like, I love, I want to get married to, you know, is that it? <laughs> and it's like, no. Uh, they want a bit more, um, you know, security than just, I love you. You know, well, how are you going to love him? How are you going to love him? What, what are you going to do? And so this is what vows are, are all about. Yeah. And uh, so... In this uh, message, I want to give you uh, scriptural things that you can say to your spouse, that you're, who you're going to marry, your wife, your husband. Um, I mean, even if you're married, these are things that you can declare to them afresh. You know, and it's like, you know what? This, is what? this is what I want to give to you. And this is what I declare I will give to you in Jesus' name. And I'm going to fight to do this for you. Um... So you make promises based on what you can give to this relationship and how you want this relationship to benefit the other person for their good. You also curse yourself if you break your promises by bringing the wrath of God upon yourself for ever breaking this covenant. That's a true vow. You know, this is how serious I'm being. I'm not just saying words to make your ears tickle and you think, oh, he loves me. You know, that's not the point of a vow. Yeah. A vow is not, this is, the, this is what I'm going to be for you, this is what I'm going to do for you until the day I die. And if I don't, if I don't, I bring down the wrath of God upon myself and let it be so to me like the, the Philistines or these, you know, the other people or uh, the people in jail, you know, whatever. Let that be to me in a hundredfold if I don't commit to these vows I'm making yeah. to you. But see, that's how important they're supposed to be. Yeah. They're not something you rattle off to, you know, like, oh, that was nice. You know, I, I like what you said. It made my heart tickle. It's like, nah, that's not the point of a vow. 